The Nifty is up 25 points. Order. Currently, the benchmark indices are up close to about half a percent. Well, Nifty 50 had really come up with a gusto, but uh, at the moment is seen some bit of uh, sluggishness. Uh, up close to about a quarter of a percent on the benchmark indices. The mid caps are cruising along. Things picked up in the last one hour. It's a hundred point gain that you can see on the Nifty. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines. I'm Sonia Shanoi and here are all the top headlines of the day. The Indian equities begin the new year on a firm footing. The Sensex and the Nifty gain nearly a percent each. Supported by metals and mining counters, Reliance, ICICI, Infosys and HDFC, bad for the bulls. Commercial vehicle sales register a strong rise in December with auto majors Ashok Leyland and Tata Motors reporting double-digit growth while strong demand on the back of good Kharif procurement and strong Rabi sowing boys attractor sales. India's largest car maker Maruti Suzuki reports a 9% decline in total units sold. Meanwhile, a dip in exports hurts Bajaj Auto and lower high-end bike sales impact Aisha Motors. Metal stocks shine after producers' hike prices and global inventory levels hit a low. Analysts' commentary that metals prices may have bottomed out boosts sentiment further. Sale, Hindalco and Tata Steel all clock in gains. And MCX dives 6% after it delays cost reduction plans by extending its IT contract with 63 moons, while Relic Enterprises gains in trade to close flat after it reports a debt settlement agreement with its lenders. And here's the lineup of what we have for you in the next half hour. It's a packed show today. The market opinion we have Samir Arora, founder and fund manager at Helios Capital, and Arvind Sanger, managing partner at Geosphere Capital Management. We'll also get you expert opinion from the corporate space from Krishna ASV of HDFC Securities and Rakesh Sharma of Bajaj Auto. Well, the Lal Street rings in the new year on a positive note. The Nifty and the Sensex gained over half a percent, but the mid-cap outperformance helped keep the market breadth in favour of the advances. Metal stocks led right from the front. Nigel is here with the day's trading action. Nigel, over to you. Well, it was a good start to 2023 with the Nifty ending on a winning note. Though volumes were still a little bit lower, so it wasn't really houseful. The mid-cap and the small-cap indices, they started off a little bit better. And the hope is that 2023 will be a far better year for the broader markets in comparison to what the headline index is likely to do. The Nifty Bank, well, it managed to conquer the 20 DMA, which was a bit of a resistance zone, but just about. Now, if we're looking at the indices itself, just take a look at that. The mid-cap and the small-cap indices, both of them did outperform, which is heartening. But there were two sectors that were in focus today. Metal stocks on optimism of China reopening. You had Hindalco as well as uh, Tata Steel. Both of them were the biggest gainers on the Nifty itself. Jeffrey said, come uh, go ahead and upgrade the stocks. Well, the smaller names as well did do pretty well. Moil, there was a price increase out there. And Sale, there's optimism that the entire Ferris pack will see improvement of profitability. That's the hope as of now. But metals did well. Auto stocks on the flip side, they had a, a mixed uh, reaction to their numbers. Mindra and Mindra managed to end mildly higher. Bajaj Auto a little bit cautious on the export, so that was a little bit lower. But the big winners were from the broader markets. SML Isuzu, uh, the reopening trade is playing out there. Schools, colleges back, uh, uh, you know. So that's why that stock was up 20%. While Atul Auto as well did end higher. There are other big winners. MCX was under pressure in trade today. Uh, you know, they've renewed their contract with 63 boards. The hope was that they'll be resorting to a new system which will cut down costs. That didn't happen, so that was under some pressure. NCC won more orders, so that was higher. And from the IT pack itself, Persistent Systems was the big outperformer. The Nifty, not out of the woods yet again, because it needs to conquer that 18,250 to around 18,350. Nonetheless, it was a good start to the year. Okay, a good start to 2023 in market opinion. Samir Arora, founder and fund manager at Helios Capital, says that India will outperform global markets in 2023. He also expects that US inflation will not be incrementally negative. Take a look. India itself will also do well in that situation. And if the rest of the world does badly, then we will surely outperform. Overall, I think this year, I am starting in my mind on a positive note because if I see the current issues, mostly related to U.S. inflation and now maybe the COVID in China. The U.S. inflation thing has been going on for quite some time. And in the next two, three months, I think by March, they would have finished their hikes and then they would pause for a long time, maybe the whole of this year. But at least it won't be hopefully incrementally negative news. And the China COVID situation, unless it happens to be some variant, which is much more scarier than what we have seen, 
then we have seen this kind of a thing in uh, India and previously in Europe and many other places. Broadly talking about the private sector, uh, this thing, as you know, like HDFC Bank, Kotak Bank, even Axis, ICICI, broadly have done very well, even in the long term. So yeah, that sector will do well. Also, if you say separately that the risk today is that whether the US problems are completely over, whether the EU problems are over, which means the IT sector, which is facing that uh, market or that econ economies. So I would think a locally oriented sector, which is financial, is better even from that angle. All right. In more opinion, Arvind Sanger, managing partner at Geosphere Capital Management, says that the biggest theme to look out for in 2023 is going to be the reopening of China and the impact it would have on global markets. Listen in. The biggest theme for us in 2023 is going to be the reopening of China. China is having a tsunami, not a wave of COVID right now. The faster it goes through, the quicker it'll come out on the other side, whether that's in February or it's in March uh, or it's at the end of the first quarter, that's going to mean a very bullish outlook for commodities on which China. One of the biggest risks to India is going to be in the second half of metals and energy do uh, get a benefit from a China reopening, you could see some, you know, reemergence of inflationary forces uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the Indian economy. But we feel good about the overall outlook. The, uh, the growth outlook is decent. Uh, but, you know, India is not immune to the fact that the U.S. could go into a recession in 2023. So we're going to be much more selective in how we look at the Indian market in 2023. Emerging markets uh, could, uh, could outperform in uh, 23. Uh, and I think part of it is that, you know, Fed is trying to engineer a slowdown and a recession. And you could have, you know, the largest weight in emerging markets is China. All right. In corporate opinion, Krishna Nasv, the lead analyst BFSI at HDFC Securities, has said that the banking sector may have exited their growth and added that structurally private banks are still better placed than PSU banks despite the rally. We might have exited the peak growth, peak margin quarter now. Uh, uh, that's that's our sense. Uh, this was probably at about 18% loan growth, than and a half 10% deposit growth. Something has got to give. We've generally been heavily leaning on private sector banks. Uh, you know, structurally, obviously, they have certain advantages. The PSU banks had a handicap. Okay, let's move to the second headline now. Commercial vehicle sales registered a very strong rise in December with auto majors Ashok Leyland, Tata Motors and Aisha Motors reporting good growth. Tractors also saw a similar surge for the same period on the back of good Kharif procurement and a strong rubby sowing which buoyed tractor sales. So let's take a look at these numbers that have come through. For Ashok Leyland, it was very strong sales in December. Total sales went up by 45% year on year. This was largely led by a good jump in the medium and heavy commercial vehicle sales and the management pointed out that this is also because of a recovery in bus sales. So the total bus segment saw a growth of 108% on a year-on-year -year basis. In fact, CV sales accelerated even for, the, uh, for Tata Motors. So Tata Motors' total domestic sales went up by 10% and within that, the MHCV demand was very strong. It was a 34% rise that Tata Motors saw in CV sales coming in at 10,885 units and the management did mention that this is because of a recovery that we've seen in in cement consumption and infrastructure demand as well as better fleet utilization and finally Aisha Motors as well reported a decent set of numbers in the CV segment uh, so these are three companies that did well today but the third headline today is India's largest car maker Maruti Suzuki reported a 9% decline in total units sold however the management maintains that retail sales for the month was very good with the auto major crossing 2.06 lakh units in terms of retail sales but overall if you look at the numbers Numbers, you know, the domestic sales were down about 10 odd percent, as well as you saw the, uh, you know, export sales for Maruti have been under pressure. Now, we had a chance to speak to the management as well. They indicated to us that not only have retail sales improved, but they believe that the worst of the export pressure is also now behind us. Take a look. The retail, though, was uh, very good, and by our estimates, the retails uh, have crossed the 411,000 mark. It's the first time ever 
in the Indian automobile industry that retails in one month have crossed the 4 lakh figure. Maruti Suzuki's uh, uh, retail in December was pretty good. We actually uh, crossed the 206,000 mark. The current uh, pending bookings are almost at 363,000 now. Retails have declined and we have to manage channel stocks. So shipping uh, shipments were also uh, reduced. Uh, but like I had mentioned, we seem to be uh, bottoming out uh, now. The free fall which we were experiencing in the April to June, July period has now sort of leveled off, though it is about 25-30% below the peak levels of uh, last year. Key markets like, let's say, Nigeria, where, where there is a very important event of the elections, uh, which is looming by end of February, as these things resolve themselves, probably in a, a couple of quarters, we should start to see uh, some kind of normalcy and upward trend. Okay, that's the management of Bajaj Auto. Now, the important bit for Bajaj Auto is that exports have been under a lot of pressure. The management, as you heard, has been indicating that it has been a free fall in terms of export sales for the last many months. That's the kind of weakness because of currency devaluation as well as pressure in most markets like Nigeria. But the important bit is the management said that the worst of the free fall is now behind them. And perhaps you could see some improvement. There are the Nigeria elections as well coming up. Post that, maybe there could be some improvement in terms of uh, uh, Bajaj Auto sales. That's not PV sales, that's actually Bajaj Auto doing two-wheeler sales, which has been uh, under a bit of pressure. We'll do one thing, we'll take a quick break on that note, but do stay tuned in. We'll be back in a jiffy with the other headlines.